Hi, this is Greg of Pensacola, Florida. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about 3D printing. Back in November, I said I was going to buy a 3D printer, which I did. I got a little bit earlier than Christmas, and I set it up. It's a set it up here in my office versus the maker space, and I'll go into a couple reasons why I did that. But purchasing that printer and anyone thinking about purchasing that printer is probably going to be the most agonizing decision that you are going to make for a piece of electronics that you've probably made in a long time. There's tons of sites out there that you can read. They rank these printers. There's a gazillion different features on it. So I started probably about four or five months ahead of time because my initial intent was not to buy the printer until February of this year. Well, my wife told me I could get it for Christmas, which was great on there. So I ordered it on um, around the week of Black Friday. I put the order in. I had it four days later. So it came in a box. It was packed perfectly in this high density foam you know, that was meant to ship the printer in. I bought it pre-assembled, and that's an option that you can make when you buy a printer. You can either buy a kit, or you can buy one that's pre-assembled. Buying the Maker Gear pre-assembled ensures that it was leveled and that it was tested before it was shipped to you. What they do is they do test prints on your printer. So this piece, and then this Gorilla Head that's on here, these pieces were printed on the printer that was shipped to me. And in the instructions, the very first thing that you're supposed to do is print um, what they printed on your printer to make sure nothing happened during shipping. And so this is my printout that's like their printout, you know, that it came in. So I was ecstatic. I took it out of the box. I put it on my desk. I was printing. You know, I loaded the filament. It does ship with a, uh, a kilogram of Black Maker Gear filament. I loaded it up, and I was printing in 15 minutes after taking it out of the box, which I was shocked. I did not want a kit. I did not want a kit as my first printer. I will gladly pay the extra money for you to assemble the printer, level the bed, and get it shipped to me working because I wanted to print things on my printer. A second printer, maybe I'll do it as a kit. There's a bunch of open source printers out there, and one of the big ones was the one that was in competition for the printer that I bought was the TAS 5. The Taz um, by Lulzbot is a completely open source printer. I mean, they have all the plans right there. You could actually print all the parts on my maker gear and I could build myself a Taz and buy the mechanical pieces and put it together. Do I really want to do that? No, not, not too interested in doing that. But for those that are, for those that are really into the mechanical and engineering and building the stuff yourself, you know, it may be a route, you know, these RepRap printers can replicate themselves. And, you know, my printer has some 3D printed parts on there, so I can reprint or I have printed parts that may fail or could fail. So that way I have one on hand, you know, like the, um, the fan shrouds and stuff like that. Occasionally you might want to have to change out the fan shroud or you want to put a different color on there. You know, it's whatever you want to do. But for me, I wanted something at the higher end of the spectrum. I looked at a bunch of different printers on the market. I looked down in the, um, the printer bot area. So the printer bot play, which was an all steel. That was one of the big things right off the bat. I didn't want a plastic printer and I didn't want one that was cut out of laser cut out of wood. Uh, the laser cut printers are like a generation back. Now printers are coming in powder coated steel, which is what mine is. So you don't get any flexing in the frame because any movement in the frame of your printer gets translated onto the print that you're printing out. So I wanted something that was all steel, the printer bot was, but I wanted a large print bed. And you know, so I wanted something that was eight inches long. I wanted to be able to print props. I wanted to be able to print larger dungeon pieces. I wanted to be able to load up a print bed with multiple um, STL files and print those and walk away and come back 10 hours, 12 hours later and the whole print bed is full of what I asked at the print. Um, the next thing, I wanted an all metal hot end. When you buy your printer, there's two types, you know, not two types of hot ends, but there's different types of hot ends. And the hot end is the part that extrudes the filament onto your, you know, that it melts and extrudes your filament. So you can get a ceramic hot end, which is gonna be good for PLA. And so far all I'm printing in is PLA right now or ABS. And then, but if you get an all metal hot end, which there are tons of manufacturers, but Maker Gear has a, has a new V4 metal hot end, 
you can print nylon, you can print flex, you can print um, PETG. And PETG is the material that I eventually want to move into. It has the strength of ABS, which is what your Legos are made out of, but it doesn't have the noxious fumes. Your water bottles that you get are made out of PETG. So um, just something I want to move into. And I have the options to print anything else on the market right now, carbon fiber. Um, there's all kinds of exotic filaments out there. Am I going to jump right on those and mess with them? No, because every time you change a filament type like that, you need to kind of reconfigure your printer and its settings and stuff. And right now, I'm loading files up, hitting play, and bringing it um, and watching it come out on my printer. So I got the maker gear. I set it up. I've been through three spools, which is one kilogram or 2.2 pounds per spool of filament so far, and I haven't had an issue. My bed right now is probably right at the point where it needs uh, maybe just a tweak on the bed leveling on there, you know, but after time, you do have to level the bed on your printers unless you buy one that auto levels. The nice thing is Maker Gear um, just sent out a whole bunch of auto leveling kits to their more seasoned testers in the forum. And so they've all installed the kits and they're getting fantastic results with it right now. So auto leveling is coming to the M2. Um, auto leveling is also coming to the, I think they're going to call it the TAS 6. So on your larger bed printers, auto leveling is coming in. And if you watch the channel, it's a 3D printing nerd. He just got a GMAX 1.5 plus, which has a huge bed on it. We're talking like 16 inches, you know, and that had an auto leveling probe on it also. So auto leveling is just not reserved for your smaller printers. It's made its way into the larger format printers. So if you're purchasing down the road, you will probably have the benefits of already having that on your printer. But the install, they send you a kit, they send you the instructions, they help you if you got a problem and you install it on here, you're gonna reflash your uh, firmware on your, on your printer and uh, you'll be good to go. So I'm really looking forward to that. But right now I don't have any problems printing at all. Everything I've been printing off this week has been great. I just know if I go edge to edge on the printer um, for something in particular, that I'm printing at me, I'm using all eight inches, like 7.99 inches on there. One at the one end may stick on the first layer, may not stick on the first layer. So I'm probably 0.005 of a millimeter, a little high. And I do use metric spacers when I set the uh, gap between the printer and the bed. So that's enough of me rambling on that part. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to readjust the camera. We're going to point down at the table. We're going to talk about a few things I printed and show you a few things I printed and I'll just keep on talking. All right, thanks, be right back. Okay, this is how I'm used to talking to you guys with just my hands on the screen. So now um, we're gonna look at the table here. These are things I've printed out since I've had the printer. Some things were just test, other things were Kickstarter campaigns. This is the Dragonlock 3D Dungeon Terrain, which is gonna be its own separate video on uh, the core set and the first expansion set. I just got the files for the other day. So I'm gonna be in the process, I'm gonna print those out and uh, we'll, that'll be its own separate video series. But I did want to put it here to show you that there is, this was a fantastic Kickstarter, but I'll save that for the other video. All right, so what do we have in front of us? So the first thing I talked about is Maker Gear does print on your printer if you buy it pre-assembled before they send it. And the first thing that you print is what they did. I, this came out so good, I didn't even bother printing this. So that's, that's fine. We'll just set that off to the side. So those are your test prints. Every printer is going to have test files that you're going to use to uh, test your printer with. Or you're going to go out to a site like Thingiverse and grab uh, calibration cubes. And let me turn my computer down one second. Okay. Um, and what these calibration cubes are is if, they, if you have a, if you're printing a 20 millimeter cube, it should be 20 millimeters on your printer. And so you're gonna need a pair of digital calipers. If you have a 3D printer and you do any type of creation at all, or you're trying to test your setup, you need a pair of 3D calipers, get them off of Amazon. They're less than 20 bucks, maybe even 12 or $13, and they work great. Um, and so that will ensure that the printer that you received is functioning properly, that it's extruding filament, and um, that, what you expect to print is actually going to print. If you're, you know, 
your first layer doesn't stick well or something like that, you know, that's, that's a big deal because your print halfway through may get knocked off the bed, you know, or shaken loose on the bed. And then all of a sudden you got a failed print. All you got is this giant ball of filament string. Now, when I talk about filament, this, this is 3D filament. This is how it comes. It comes in that box. And then it comes in a package and they're vacuum sealed. And they have a desiccant kit bag in them because PLA does absorb moisture. Even down here in the middle of the winter in Florida, it's not that bad. But when I do store my filament, it is stored with desiccant in a sealed container. And I'll show that in a future video also. But I do use the eSun filament. Um, Outside of the initial spool, the Maker Gear filament, it's all I've run through it. I haven't had a problem. One of the big people on the Maker Gear forums is um, his website is Int Servo. He has four or six of the M2 printers, and he's also the U.S. Uh, like person that receives this because that's a four, that's a Chinese um, filament that's made. And so far, I haven't had any problems. About twenty bucks on there, so you can't beat it. I print a ton of stuff. And when you go to print, you know, the program that you use, it's called a slicer, well, can give you, I use Simplify 3D, um, can give you an, an estimated cost of what your print is going to cost in filament. So it's pretty neat. So I have a bunch of different colors. I have blue, I have red, I have silver, black, green, and I have PLA, and then I have PLA Plus. PLA Plus is their new product. So this is the first time I'm using the silver and the PLA Plus. This is the regular silver on there, so it's pretty good. Now, you're going to say, why do you need to print it in gray? I don't know why, but you cannot find gray anywhere. It's like, I think everybody in the Dragon Lock Kickstarter bought it all, and then but you couldn't find it on Amazon. He didn't have it on his website. It may have come back in stock some now. Not sure, but let's take a look at a few things. This right here, this uh, 3D printing nerd just printed this off on his channel. And this is a stress test file. So this is off Thingiverse. And what Thingiverse is, is a repository for 3D models. Some are printable. Well, a majority of them are printable is why they're put there. Some are for laser cutters and stuff like that. But so he made this dice tower and he made this like a stress test. You print this with no support material. And when it gets done, it should have a functioning door, which it does. That's the big thing with the model, because on the larger one that I printed, the door doesn't work. But he redesigned this door, but it all pr I didn't print this door separate. I printed it all as one piece. It came off the printer just like this, and then you work this, and then boom. So the, the mechanics that, you know, that hold this door on are printed into it. And then you'll see the top. You throw the dice in there. They come down, and you can catch it. So that was the threat. So then I decided let's print the big one on there. So this is another file. So this is full size for the file. And this door did not move up and down. It moved up, it moved down, it moved up, and then it cracked on there right off to the side. So that seems to be typical on this dice tower. The door just doesn't seem to function correctly. And I think he was gonna go, you know, work on it. But I just super glued it down. That's fine. Huge opening for the top for your 16 millimeter dice or your polyhedral dice. And they'll fly right out the front of here with no trouble at all. So this is a really neat project. This took, uh, I think, nine hours to print. And, you know, this is using the blue filament from eSun. So I was really happy how this came out. Um, and if you watch my last video, I told you I'm in the engineering graphics design program. So for me, if I was gonna modify this dice tower, I would have the landing longer. I would have the landing out about that far. Then it really wouldn't matter whether you have a fold up or fold down gate, because you're gonna have plenty of room for your dice to travel and roll as they tumble out of here. But this thing, it's pretty neat. It worked real good on there, so I'm glad I printed that. Uh, the Millennium Falcon. This was great. You know, this is before the movie came out. This is one of the first things I printed. And what's crazy is, is this thing prints. Let me see if I can get it to stand. It prints just like that, straight up and down. Let me move this over. So you're sitting there, especially when you got a new printer, 
you're like, is this thing going to tip over, get knocked over and stuff? And that's why you want to print your calibration cubes at the beginning, you know, to test that your printer is aligned properly because this, if it's not, the print head could hit it and knock it over. And like I said, it's only in this, there's no support. This is printed with no support material at all that goes to the bed to keep it up on there or anything like that. It's just printed as one piece. It took like 13, 14 hours to print. I probably have the infill set way too high than I need to. And what the infill is, is how much material is between these outer and lower, upper and lower layers that kind of make it like a, a honeycomb pattern in there. So the higher the infill, the denser it is. So if it was 100% infill, it'd be completely solid. This is probably 40%. You cannot even flex it, you know, so it's probably overkill for it, but it's not going to get hurt or anything like that. Um, this I talked about a little bit in the other video. This, I think it's from Sweden. A guy from Sweden uploaded this, and this was on his college campus. It was just a monument in his campus, so he used uh, 123D Catch, which is a free program that you can download on Android or uh, iPhone, and he walked around it and you just snap pictures in this circle and then it created a STL file, which is the file type that we print on the printer with and printed this off. And I thought it came out really, really good. I mean, I'm sitting away from the camera, but if you can see that, you know, there's actually the little face outlines on there. So this is great. You see something in the real world and you got a program like that. You walk around it, you snap it, bang, it's in your D&D game. It's in your war game on your war game table. It didn't cost you anything. You didn't have to model it. All you did is just take a picture of it, scan it, and then put it down. So that's that's really neat. And that's neat that Autodesk is doing that. So they released all kinds of programs that, you know, they're really supporting, you know, I don't want to say the hobby, but the industry, I guess. For me, it's a hobby. All right. This right here. This is the first part of the uh, Duke 44 from Destiny. So this is the left-hand barrel side. It's going to be on here and then it's going to have a revolver i mean it's going to have the chamber and then the handle down here ran out of silver filament so i stopped this is the piece that i talk about that uses my entire bed this goes edge to edge on here because i don't shrink i haven't shrink shrank the model at all so this is a hundred percent of how the model was built and so i'm printing it the same way it's got a working release right here so when the uh the cylinder's in there you know, I can click it and then flip it out. So I'm going to work on this, and I'll keep showing this as we're going along. It's really neat. Dragon Lock. This was a Kickstarter that just ran, and this is what accelerated my purchase of my 3D printer. Um, Fat Dragon Games, and like I said, it's going to have its own, its own video because I'll take all this apart. But all these are printed as individual pieces. These are two-by-two two squares. So any of the Hearth Starts people that do the modular dungeons, well, here it is. But they, if you can see the bottom of this, you see those clips, that's what holds it all together. So the bigger I build, the more clips I put on, and you know that's what holds this piece together. So if I'm traveling somewhere, here we go, you know, I'm, I can move it around. It's not falling apart on there. So to me, this was huge. The reason being, you know, and I know people are going to be like, oh my God, you know, I'm only going to do her starts. I love my her start stuff, but traveling with that is a nightmare. And if I'm going to a con, having a mix and match of the her starts just helps with the speed up of the setup. Or if I'm going over to somebody's house, you know, and especially at a con, because you never know who's playing, you know, for you, for those of you that are on the channel that do the her start stuff or have watched any of those videos, there's a lot of work. It's as much art, you know, almost as it is, you know, hobby, because you put a lot of work into getting that stuff. And you don't want somebody slinging some huge or somebody walking up with metal dice or something like that, and slinging it into your project or slinging dice into your terrain. I mean, that that's a problem. You know, this stuff is not going to break, period. I can't flex it. I can't turn it. I can throw this right into a bag and I'm good to go. I'm going to paint it up. I'm going to airbrush this stuff. That way it all matches 
on there. Now I did it in black first because that's the filament that came with my printer. And so far I switched over to the silver and I think I'm gonna keep with the silver. I just got two more kilograms of silver so I can print more pieces and um, print the expansion pack. So this will be its own video. We'll take these apart. We'll look at the locks. We'll look at all the individual pieces that comes with this and things like that. I'm a war machine player. You guys know that if you've been on the channel. So just playing around. Uh, this is where the whole creativity part comes in. I wanted to make a rec marker or proxy base. So, you know, I went out to uh, Tinkercad and Tinkercad is an online CAD program. It's free, doesn't cost you anything. And it gives you some basic design tools to make some stuff. So I found the logo out there, a vector file, and I turned it into a 3D model, and then I embedded it inside this 50 millimeter circle and printed it out. It's pretty neat. It's about an hour and a half worth of work. I know some of you will be like, oh man, I'm not gonna put that type in, but it's fun because that, nobody created that. I didn't go find that, I made that. So that was neat. This is called the Oklahoma template. We use these in War Machine, except I made this too big up here at the top. This should be a half inch instead of an inch, but as a proof of concept, I was able to print it out. I was able to put a little logo in the front of there so you can see that. You know, so it was neat. That was something else that I created. What's funny, I talked about the house renovation in the last video. I sat there, I bought some gallons of paint, you know, and normally I cut the trim in first. But I went to dip a cup, my red solo cup, into the paint and the thing is too big. So I came back and I was joking around laughing, you know, that I need a paint scoop. I said, wait a minute. I took like 30 minutes on Tinkercad, maybe not even that. And that's logging in, setting it up. And so then I came up with this. I know it's ridiculous, but you know what I can do with it? I can grab it right here. I can dunk it in a gallon of paint and then pour it in my trim cup. This thing cost me like 10 cents to make in filament. And I've used it like four or five times and I just rinse it out. So this was one of those things that why I'm loving the 3D printing is you can think it up in your head and it's a printable design, uh, you know, you can make it. It's like a low grade replicator from Star Trek. You know, this complete concept to creation was an hour and a half. I had this thing sitting in front of me and it was ready to go with me the next day. I didn't have to get in my car and run to Lowe's. I didn't have to go get a cup out of the kitchen that no one's gonna drink out of again. And guess what, if I break it, I print it again. If somebody else wants one, I print it and give it to them. So it's really neat. Um, with the Dragon Lock clips, you know, those clips that I showed you at the bottom of this piece right here, those black clips, well, I needed to make an organizer. And this is where, when you first get your printer, you're just gonna print everything. So I printed a box. It's got removable drawers on there. It's got drawers that are split in half. It also has a four-way drawer, but I'm not sure if I did one of those or not. So what I keep in here is my Dragon Lock clips, and then I also keep the pieces that go to the top of the doors. So I had an extra one right there. Do I need it? No, can I throw it in a bag? Yeah, but you got the printer. A dollar, maybe not even that, maybe 50 cents, 75 cents worth of filament. Boom, you got yourself a drawer. And I can configure the drawers customizable all I want. Now. 3D printing, this is 100% when you load it up of the size that it was designed to be. The nice thing with 3D printing is in your slicer, you can scale it. What if you want one that's twice the size? I hit 200%, boom, there it is. Now I have a box that's twice as big with drawers that are twice as long that fit right in there. That's what I love. Let's say you want a box that's half the size. As long as you don't break the minimum threshold, which is about point. 04 millimeter on this line for my printer on uh, you you know for this thinnest piece that you can print because a piece of filament the filament that I print with is 1.75 millimeters wide and then it extrudes out of a 0.5 millimeter head 0.05 I don't know but um, you can shrink and expand this stuff and you didn't have to do any modeling at all so if you want something that's a certain size and it's not that size, that's where your digital calipers come in because you can measure it and say, okay, I'm gonna scale this by 125%. Simplify 3D has a box that locks the ratios and 
you can scale this 125% and you get a box that's just a little bit bigger. You can do that with any STL file that you load. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. So if you don't have an eight inch print bed and you wanna print something like this, but maybe you just want a test piece, well, just scale it down 50% and print it all out. Just make sure every piece that you print is 50%. And guess what? It's gonna to snap together and go together pretty much exactly the same as it would if it was 100%. You get a guy with that GMAX printer that's got a huge print bed on it, he can go 200% and basically make this thing almost like a, a rifle with a handgun grip on it, you know? So you're not, what's nice with the models is that they, they scale. An example, you know, this right here, these little pieces that you can see down here, this is from printablescenery.com. Uh, this is a Stalingrad house. So I was working on uh, some stuff for Flames of War. And so I took his files because his files are all meant for 28 millimeter. So I cut them in half. Well, Flames of War is one one hundredth and maybe just a little bit bigger. And yeah, these are going to be too small. So that right there. So I then I adjusted the print and this is the same print. I just adjust the scale a little bit to like 72% of the uh, the other one or 67%, I forget what the exact percent, I have it written down on there, but then printed this out. So this is the correct scale. These I can mount on a piece of hardboard, cardboard, whatever I want, glue them together. And this is multiple levels high. This is three levels high with a roof on there. So then there's six pieces at the bottom. I just, I bought a pack of this stuff because I was like, man, is every level going to be six pieces on there, but no, he cut them in half on the next building. So that's, that's pretty good. But this gives you an idea of something that you can do, you know, with scaling. So you get a piece of 28 millimeter terrain that you like, and you got a 3D file for it. Well, you can cut that down to 15 millimeters probably pretty easily. Uh, what else we got? For your RPG, this fountain right here. Well, this, yeah, basically it could be a fountain. Um, this was something I just found on Thingiverse the other day. You know, so it's, so a print says a base and then these three pieces right down here. And then each one of the columns is separate and then the top. So, and then it's got add-on pieces that you can put in there. So what, which if you look, you see that circle down in the bottom, but when you print the fountain, when you print the fountain file that he has, it's smaller than what that circle is in the beginning. And there's no other file, STL file out there to do it. So you take your digital calipers, you measure how big that is, you measure that hole down at the bottom and you see how big that is, and that's 50 millimeters. And so you take this spot, this model, oops, right here, and then you blow it up into this. So it's got a 50 millimeter base on it now, but it all scaled together. And then you can drop it right down in there and now Guess what? That's how it should look. Or you've got, um, you can put this in here and we can put our little ghoul that we've been using all the way along and stuff like that. You know, then he also printed another base. This base had a smaller hole in it and he printed bench seats around it. So these seats come right off. So if you look, that's how it prints with the gap and this right here is the brown e-sun pla plus filament and then these just snap right in i can glue them in if i want i can you know if i wanted to modify the design some and take it out but then you also have the pieces that go in the middle so this is where that small fountain can go and then you can have the you know you see that your figure fits right in there with no trouble at all you can also put like this out here and then you could put a, a figure as a statue. So that's got a 25 millimeter hole on top, you know, that you can get a Reaper figure or something like that, put it right on there and mount it. So it's pretty neat. It gives you some options. Um, more RPG stuff, barrels. Who loves terrain? And if you go through there, if you go through Thingiverse and type RPGs or RPG terrain, these are barrels. So these barrels came in two sizes, and there is tons of RPG stuff on there. Um, if you go over to Dungeon Master Mark's channel, he just showed some of the 3D dungeon train that he printed. That's from the Open Forge. 
collection that he's using on there. Really good stuff. I'm going to print some of that stuff out because I think he got some sewers and things like that that the uh, Dragon Mock might not have come with in the first uh, Kickstarter campaign. So here's some barrels. So you print these out. These take, you know, I'll put like six or eight of them on a board at a time. And, you yeah, know, they print right out. I printed some in black first because I was using up some filament. And then I'm like, you know, and when you do the, when you got these, you're going to see some of these in the Hearth Starts in because I put them in there. These are great accent pieces. All these pieces right here, a buck, maybe a dollar's worth of filament, a dollar and a quarter. I don't know what you would pay for that. You know, if you had, you know, I know we can cast our own barrels too. We got that, but here's another variety in the barrel. So if you have a 3D printer and you're doing some terrain, this is pretty cheap. And so if you're putting it in brown, um, like I did, it's almost got a wood color. And there is wood filament out there that you can print in that's got wood particle in it and stuff. But I printed it in brown. I thought it came out pretty good. Um, the detail on them is really nice. Ooh, let's see. You can see that. Um, so I can print these out on demand. If I need 50 of these barrels, if I need to put stuff on the bottom of them, you know, that a mark or a letter on what's in them, then I can do that too. What else? Dice trays. Um, in the rolling video where I was talking at the beginning, you saw, you've probably, you saw a couple trays on the back. You know, if you're a War Machine guy, you recognize the uh, Kador symbol in the bottom of there. I just grabbed a logo off the internet, turned it into a 3D model, embedded it 1 64th of an inch. Well, one of my friends came up that I game with and said, hey, I want a dice tray. I said, okay, um, but I want it to hold my dice. I was like, all right. So I designed the tray and these are the, the initial prototypes. So what they are is the tray with the slots for the die. Now, did I design it at these three sizes? No, what I did is I designed it at full size because he uses 25 millimeter dice. So those are one inch by one inch dice. So I needed the slots to do that, but to do the test print, I shrunk it down until I knew that the 12 millimeter dice would fit in the slot. And so I did all this through the slicer program before I printed. So I printed it out. There was my concept. I had a logo. I had the dice tray. The dice sat in their own individual spots like he wanted, and I could roll in the tray. It's a small tray, but it's small dice. So then I'm like, all right, let me make it a little bit bigger. Let me make sure that my scaling is working correctly. So I want to put 16 millimeter dice in there. So that's what those are. And they fit right in these slots. Work good. Dice, yeah, you know, the tray is scaled accordingly on there for the dice. And there they are. He comes back and says, can you put six dice in there? I'm like, Ugh. so I go back into Tinkercad change my design i make it wider i add the uh, six spot for the die and print it out well he has that now and i also added that logo inside each one of these wells and so i gave that to him on there so it's just stuff you can do it's you know it's a one-off on there but this is something that you well this is something that i designed you know from start to end you know so i made the block and hollowed it out and sunk the sunk the logo and since i started this i've learned quite a bit about some other stuff too Guild Ball. We just started playing Guild Ball. I talked about that in my last video. So if you go look around, you can't find the template sets. So they give you this. This is what you can cut out of paper. And so the first thing you do normally when you have a 3D printer and you're looking for something is you go to Thingiverse and you type in the search box, what am I looking for on there? So I typed in Guild Ball and lo and behold, somebody made the Guild Ball templates. And I'm like, oh, awesome. And so there they are right there. So instead of having used the paper, I now have the scatter templates. And if I can find my base, and these are for a 30 millimeter base. And so the very first printout that I did, I tried to put this in it and it was too tight on there. So I took my digital calipers. Again, you gotta have a set of digital calipers if you're using a 3D printer. Um, and check the opening and it was 29 millimeters. So I got a 30 millimeter base. So I scaled the uh, the program because I wanted a little bit of wiggle room 
to print at 104%. Drops in there, no trouble at all. And then we have the scatter one like that right there. We're gonna print them up in a whole bunch of different colors for the guys for this week. And uh, we're gonna have some fun with that. But that, 18 cents worth of filament. Done, game toast. They're not gonna break or anything like that. They're gonna be good to go. Uh, an objective. So in Guild Ball, there's a 50 millimeter objective that's on your side of the board. I'm playing the engineers. Somebody on Thingiverse had this. It's a 40K objective that he had, but it was on a uh, 40 millimeter base size. So you go into your slicer program, say scale it equally till my X axis was 50 millimeters, told it to print. There it is. And what's nice is when it's up on that size also, where is my... If I take the 16 millimeter die, it's because you keep track of points that you use during the game. That die happens to sit right there. So it's pretty neat. Um, and I think that is about it for this video. I know this video has gone long. I've rambled on. But I just wanted to show you some of the different stuff. Oh, this right here, this is a pie coaster. This is the Tower of Pie. My wife's a math teacher. So print her out something. And what happened was is I had one of the numbers right here didn't stick you know, it kind of broke off. So I just stopped the print early um, and reprinted it again, just repositioning the, the piece on the bed a little bit. And it printed, and it prints really tall too. So that's one of those. The tall version is too tall for the pencils. The short version is probably too short for the pencils. So about 75%, if you go to print the tower pie, um, is probably about the right size. So... I guess in closing, you know, everything that I've shown you so far, I got from Thingiverse with the exception of this. This the Duke 44. They do have it on Thingiverse, but my mini factory, if you go there, if you're looking for this type of prop level stuff, go to my mini factory because those files are hand, they are guaranteed to print. Um, they've been set up to print. They've been sliced to print, you know, so if for stuff like this, you know, there, this is on Thingiverse, but somebody just like chopped it in three parts instead of the 12 or 10 pieces that this really is, or however many it is. But the Millennium Falcon is on Thingiverse. The Dice Towers were on Thingiverse. The Dragon Lock terrain is not. That is paid. That was a Kickstarter. That's paid terrain. I don't even know if you can buy it yet to the public, but they are way ahead of schedule on delivering. I mean, he's two months, almost three months ahead of schedule on delivering the files for the, the different sets. So this here's paid and that that's a market that if you like design, another thing you're looking at is you don't need to sell the product. All you need to do is sell the file. And you know, that's, that's how a piece comes up right there as I twist it on it. But those are the clips that hold it together. And then I can just pop it right back down on here and keep on going. So, you know, you create the file and sell the file. That's what the, the Winterdale Kickstarter campaign was too. These are some beautiful houses that the guy did. Um, and I'm really excited to print that stuff out. So as soon as that comes in, it's gonna go onto the printer and we'll get that up on the video. But I just wanted to show you some stuff with the 3D, with the 3D printer, give you an idea of a wide range of stuff that you can make. Go to Thingiverse, just hit explore things at the top, and it just kind of does in a chronological. Or if you're interested in a game system, if you type War Machine, it shows you stuff. If you type 40K, it shows you stuff. If you type RPG, it's there. If you type board games, it's there. You know, there's components and pieces and parts and webcam mounts and all kinds of stuff for your phones and things like that. So it, it really is a lot of fun. So if you made it all the way to the end of this video, I had a couple of retakes at the beginning, so I'm not sure exactly how long it is, but I know it's at least 20 minutes. I thank you very much. Um, a lot more of this stuff's gonna come to the channel. Like I said, I'm gonna do some dedicated projects. We'll print these and build these and paint these together and stuff like that. Uh, we'll add some of this stuff in with the Her Starts projects, you know, so you got some variety that you're going, because variety is great. We all want that, you know, in our dungeons and stuff, so we're not just going into the same square room every time so between this and her starts and i don't i've never owned any uh dwarven forge 
The stuff is beautiful. I have seen it on the table before. I've never owned any because I got the Hurt Start, so I never bought any Dwarven Forge, you know, after I had the Hurt Starts, and I did not do the Kickstarter. But this right here, I'll be printing all kinds of this stuff out. So I appreciate you guys hanging in there. If you liked the video, please subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.